hello and welcome to the print i'm snesh alex philip now just imagine yourself closed in a dark room there is no sound there is no door no window but then you have to communicate with one of your loved ones or let's say your boss who's sitting kilometers away probably somewhere in a foreign country how would you do it just close your eyes and imagine that well that's exactly what the indian navy is working on earlier this week defense minister rajnath singh laid the foundation stone for a 2900 acre large very low frequency station in andhra pradesh or sorry in telangana and what is this station all about what is the connection to this dark room that i made you imagine yourself to be and for this i have with me captain tk sharma the former indian navy spokesperson and someone who i always turn to when it comes to understanding naval issues thank you and welcome to the print sir uh, thank you snehesh and it was a very very comprehensive kind of an inter- uh, introduction to the subject well uh, viewers we are talking about the latest vlf station foundation stone for which has been laid recently by the raksha mantri in vikarabad telangana now this facility which uh, snehesh was uh, referring to is something with which indian navy will communicate with its strategic assets which will be deployed or are being deployed all across and uh, we know it the strategic uh, assets are used more for deterrence and not for normal day use so this so is when you where... say strategic so when you say strategic you know for the viewers when he says strategic he means nuclear assets and what I'm are the assets the, that you're talking about i am i'm exactly i'm talking about one of the arms of our nuclear triad the nuclear submarines basically this is the facility which will talk to our boats whenever wherever they are deployed and let me tell you these boats are not uh, uh, deployed just for any normal job they are only for deterrence and should there be a need which we all pray that that day will never come but should that happen we have to be ready you can't say that uh, india being such a great power and with such a massive uh, area of responsibility and we have our own adversaries you know it well so i don't have to spell it out but yes we have to be ready as the world is getting ready for any eventuality and for this how do we talk to our boats how do we talk to our strategic assets so this is the basic facility which has been now laid foundation stone for and viewers this is not the first one we made our first vlf station way back in 1990 91 and that is in tirunelveli tamil nadu which is known by the name INS Kattaboman Indian naval ship it is a stone ship which means it's a base uh, in which we have made our first vlf station and um, this station is a you know this uh, is uh, made in a very vast area which we will explain as the interaction Absolutely. goes forward yeah so you you know you mentioned the fact that uh, you know this is for communications now how do submarines forget the strategic assets but how do a conventional submarine also communicate you know one would imagine uh, are there wireless systems that they use to communicate how is for example the submarine is submerged you know uh, uh, 100 uh, tens of feet under the water how do they communicate sir normally on a normal very, day uh, very 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 pertinent question snehesh you have asked and uh, let me attempt to answer it in very simple terms like when a submarine has gone out you know it is a stealth weapon which means that the beauty of the submarine is that you will never come to know where it is that means she is operating sub surface under the surface of water now when she is sub, uh, operating like that and she needs to know where is the enemy or the enemy has been detected by some air asset or by a surface asset or by some merchant ship which has sighted something uh, which is suspect so how do we convey it to the boat which is underwater so there are procedures for it for which 
the boats, the conventional boat. Now, you know what? The conventional boat will come up every 24, 36, 48 hours to charge her batteries. That is the time when she comes to around 9 meters below the surface of water, puts out her periscope, antennas, and various other things. And those antennas will catch the transmission, which is coming from various naval stations. And this transmission, which is called in our terminology, a broadcast, which means that it is a message is put in a loop and it is being repeated. And it is being repeated for many number of times. And it is decided that a particular message will remain in a loop for, say, seven days, six days, five days, and how it is to be done. So this procedure, these are very nitty gritties and very, uh, you know, peculiar to the naval uh, ways of operating at sea. But for a normal, uh, you know, viewer to understand, it is enough that a message is being relayed from a shore station ashore. And at this boat, whenever she gets an opportunity or whenever she feels comfortable, she will come to periscope depth. And periscope depth, which I have told you, is not exposing herself. She is still underwater, but just an antenna comes up. And this antenna is capable of receiving the transmission happening. So once that uh, message is uh, taken by the boat, it is again then you know, deciphered or decrypted, and then they take the instructions. So unlike unlike a conventional submarine, which have to surface every 48 hours to recharge its batteries, the nuclear submarine can remain, remain submerged for long, eternally, as long as a reactor is working, right? right. Uh, so when the US deploys, you know, the nuclear submarines remain underwater for several months itself on deployment. And that's the same thing that our uh, ships also uh, go. We already have uh, two SSBNs that have been inducted. A third one is being uh, is is under construction. Would be inducted probably somewhere next year. And the the CCS, that's the Cabinet Committee on Security, has gone ahead and given approval for building of two SSNs also. So how does this nuclear submarine communicate? So does it have a device in it that it is able to listen, or uh, how does it communicate in uh, with the system, sir? That is what uh, now, uh, as you have brought out very correctly, we are going to have many number of uh, boats which are going to be nuclear capable in the times to come. Like we have two SSBNs, everybody knows that from open source. And now approval has been given for two more SSNs. And in the times to come, we will have a good number of boats because our yeah. adversaries are also having a lot, uh, you know, multiples of tens. So that is one point. Now, how to communicate with the nuclear boat? very rightly brought out by you that once they go out on the mission, when they deploy it, they will remain discreet for months together. They will not, you, nobody knows their position. They have been given a tasking. The captain of the submarine will conduct her operations as desired, as planned. And now comes the point, how do you communicate? So this boat, they have got something called as a trailing wire antenna. Now they will not surface. I repeat it, these boats, the strategic boats, the nuclear boats, or the nu the boats carrying nuclear tip missiles, they will never disclose their position. They will, as convenient to them, they will probably, you know, the float out their trailing wire antenna. Now comes the role of the VLF station. Now, once the VLF station is transmitting these waves, this is uh, the spectrum which you have uh, seen in the yeah. press release that the transmission is between 3 kilohertz to 30 kilohertz spectrum. So the, this, this transmission is capable of penetrating the surface of the ocean and it will go up to a particular depth where it meets the trailing wire antenna of the submarine. So yeah. that is where the information exchange takes place. This antenna will catch the signal and then relay it to the boat and where you have the equipment, you will decrypt it and read the message. Now, this message can also be picked up by all the crafts, whether it is an aircraft, ship or a submarine, which has got an antenna capable of receiving VLF transmissions. So it is not that this transmission is only for a particular boat. This is a broadcast. This is 
by the way, the power which is emitted out by these transmitters is capable of sending the signal around the earth. Okay. That is the kind of ranges which we are talking like when you said when American boats or for that matter, our adversaries boats, when they're operating, they will get the message provided their antenna is out floating in water, not necessarily getting exposed out of the water. Because anything which exposes out of the water is liable to get detected and compromise the position of that asset. So all these things are catered for. So two, two questions. One, is this antenna always out when it comes to a nuclear sub? And second, uh, I'm sure these are encrypted messages, right? It's not 100%. that, uh, it's not that uh, let's say, a Chinese uh, submarine will also pick up the same signal. They will get some noise. That's it until unless you have the equipment which is capable of decrypting it for them it is only noise okay and that is many many countries are doing it there are many boats floating around yeah. all over the oceans so you will get but what is required for you you know it that once it comes you decrypt it and then you make sense out of it and uh, you know when we were talking about this the vlf transmissions now you say that whether the boat is going to have the antenna out always no sir this is the you know the call of the ceo when he feels that he needs to you know receive something latest or if he has not communicated with the base or have not received the messages for the last few hours few days few months then he might you know just come up less than yeah, yeah, that is on a need need to know basis. He will Absolutely. only come up and will uh, float out his trailing wire antenna and never compromise his position. He is not going to break surface. He will always be subsurface. There will be a, a, a tiny little wire which will come out and which will also be submerged because these waves, the VLF waves, are capable of penetrating the depths of the ocean so they will break the surface go down and this antenna will catch the signal and do the need for so you know india already has one that you mentioned now the uh, now the for the second one uh, the foundation stone has been laid there's a plan for a third one also but you know this found this entire base itself is spread on 2900 acres uh, that's a lot of space right now when you're talking about radars you know uh, i'm sure the viewers have also seen radars uh, you know these are smaller radars big radars but 2900 uh, acres why is that so and are these radars so big these are first of all uh, these are not radars these are the tars transmission tars you must have seen high tension wires yeah. which are traveling these uh, poles are almost to the height of say 50 meters 100 meters but I must tell my viewers through you that the antennas of VLF station are almost half a kilometer high, half a kilometer high. And the wow. amount of power which they are pushing out, the, 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 the energy which is getting pushed out and which gets induced by the ground waves, it is reflected from the ground. And then it also reflects on the surface of the sea. And that is how it is getting transmitted around the world. So the, because it is a VLF station, then there is a wavelength thing and the height of the antenna is lambda by two. So you can well imagine the, the higher the wavelength, the bigger the length of the or the height of the antenna. So these antennas are very, very high. Then you need to, uh, once a facility of this kind is being made, it has to be protected. It should not be in, you know, the places where you have other traffic. So that is why such a massive area is earmarked for them. And then the station will come up over there. There will be n number of towers. And why second station? Why third station? This is to cater for the redundancy. If I have to do maintenance in station number A, so station B will be operational. If there is some problem with the power generation or something else in station B, and station A is under repair or maintenance, then station C takes over. So this is where, because we are now uh, a very, very big Navy, we are a very credible Navy, we have our assets out. So we can't be dependent on 
one station. We started in 1990 and today we are uh, inaugurating or we are laying the foundation stone for second station. And as you have rightly mentioned, there will be a third station. So things are improving, things are getting better, better and redundancy is being catered for. You know, now viewers, you would wonder that, you know, the first station came up in 1991. The reason why India, uh, you know, set up that station was because it was at that time when India had gone ahead and leased the first of the Chakra series uh, nuclear powered submarines from Russia. So India has been operating this, but now as, as, as uh, Captain DK was mentioning and I was mentioning earlier, the number of nuclear assets are now increasing and it is important to have A, B and C for the very same reasons that the captain has really emphasized on. But thank you so much, uh, uh, Captain Sir, for speaking to the print. It's always a pleasure to have you on board. Thank you. Thank you.